So in, in structuring this course, I had to make some decisions about what to include and what not to, not to include, and I ended up cutting out of our reading list chapters 3 and 4, which are um, on the demand for health, no, that's health, not health care, and on the socioeconomic, uh, the connection between socioeconomic status and health outcomes. And these are really two very, very good and important chapters. It's just that in seven weeks' time, I, I had to, again, I had to make some choices. So I, I thought I'd just put up a screencast to tell you, to give you a sense of what's in those chapters. And uh, if your curiosity is piqued and, and you don't mind mucking around in a little bit more technical economic models than I've chosen to focus on this semester, um, then I, I encourage you to have a look at, at chapters three and four. Um, so under, underlying the, the demand for health care is, is the demand for health. And it, it sounds sort of obvious when, when you say it like that, but, but a lot of courses, including apart from the screencast ours, focus right in on, on access to health care, demand for health care. And um, the fact is access to health care is just a small determinant of health. In fact, it's, it's a very, very small determinant of health. Your decision to exercise, your decisions to eat right, uh, your decisions to um, avoid smoking, to drink in moderation, uh, these decisions will determine your health much more than what, whatever your health plan is. Now, you may choose to go skydiving with, uh, you know, an older parachute that hasn't been inspected, and, and there are things uh, like that that you could do to jeopardize your health. But, health. but generally, if you're out there exercising, eating right, um, not smoking, not drinking, you, you might still get unlucky and, and get get hit by a bus or, or get cancer or um, actually when you think about expensive health events, having a kid actually is one of those things that is out there a lot. About half of us will probably have that. But if you weren't covered for insurance, having a kid is thousands and thousands of dollars. In our discussion forum, I'll talk a little bit about my experience in the uh, infertility clinics that, for which we didn't have benefits. Um, so I'll save that. But uh, Anyway, by the time you get into the healthcare system, and you know, a lot of us have uh, well chat, checks, etc., or go when we have some infection that needs an antibiotic uh, prescription. But it, it, by the time you get into the hospital, you've either made some very poor lifestyle choices, uh, or uh, you're just you've just been unlucky. You've lost that that lottery that we're all exposed to: getting cancer, you know, getting hit by a bus, whatever. Um, once you're in the system, you've 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 really lost a lot of your health. I have this nice image of a, this patient that's obviously been in some terrible accident, um, and the doctors all around him. You know that that's just uh, there's an unlucky unluckiness there. I have my students in in the version of this class that I teach to the undergrads at, at Pacific University. I have them read this article by um, Ford. Gu Shuang, Sai, and Li, if we're authors on it, it's called Low Risk Lifestyle Behaviors and All Cause Mortality Findings from the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, number three, mortality study. It's in the American Journal of Public Health and was published in October of 2011. Anyway, in that study, they, it's a long, long um, period they're studying, and they, they have all these um, people that enrolled in the study like in the 70s or, or you know, some long, long time ago. And then they track that cohort all the way through to you know, 2005 or something like that. And they, they look at who, who died and who lived in that, in that cohort. And they restrict it a little bit by age so that we're just looking at people who, who would not have been expected to die because of old age. And they find that um, the determinants of, of health, uh, the... the the factors that can explain like 80, 90 percent of who lived and who died came down to exercise, regular exercise, diet, you know, have the vegetables on your plate, uh, not smoking um, and drinking in moderation. Anyway, there are a very small set of behaviors that had tremendous explanatory power. And, and then the, the access to health care simply didn't have have much sway on those outcomes. So, so um, there's a lot of research to this effect. That's 
just a very accessible study that I, I share with, I often share with my students. I'll, I'll try to remember to post a PDF for those of you who are interested, but it's, it's totally optional. So in, in chapter three, the Bhattacharya and his co-authors present this Grossman model of health, which is really a beautiful and, and quite brilliant model. One of those models you look at and you think, God, why didn't I think of that? But um, the, I, I know it's a little bit technical for, for um, given that there's no prereqs. That's, in fact, why I, um, I edited it out of our course. But I, I just wanted to give you a sense of it. So if these equations lose you, don't, don't sweat it. This isn't going to be on any test or anything. Probably That means most of you just turn it off. But it, it's really fascinating, fascinating stuff. Anyway, this, this utility is happiness in the Grossman model. And, and they say it's, it's, an out, it, it, it's a result of this function that considers only two things. One is the level of your health. So, so if you're sick... You're, you're just not going to be able to um, enjoy anything. You're not going to be able to be happy. You're, 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 you're sick. And, you know, so, so that's, that's one element. If how, what's the level of your health? Of course, it's, you know, perfect health, a little bit sick, you know, dead. There, there's, there's, you know, there's a stock of health that, that might go from zero, that's dead, to, I don't I think they scale it to one, you know, perfect me, right? I'm, I'm joking. Uh, but, but some wonderfully healthy 30-year-old, somebody in the prime of their life. Um, and, and anyway, then, then they have the Z, just some, all other things that are good. So it's this, this mixed good, a composite good. If you like to play video games, opera tickets, paintball, and company of friends, any, anything that makes you happy, we call that the home good. So health, stock, and home good. So we're just not, this is, we need two goods because one of them needs to be the stock of health. One of them means to be needs to be stuff you enjoy, and and you know we could have a million goods or at least twenty thousand if we were going to be realistic. But we want to keep things simple. That's why we model, just so we can keep it at a scale that our, our human brains can master. Well, then they have this important constraint, and and that is that there's only twenty four hours in a day, and those twenty four hours are spent in in any of four ways. And, of course, if you spend one more hour working, it means spending one, one less hour um, doing something else. So, so this is a constraint, and it, in this model captures our choices. Do we go out and exercise, or do we sit down and, and watch Survivor on TV? You know, it's, it's what, do we, what do we do? And, and so every period, this is, a, this is a dynamic model that goes over many periods, right? Because if, if you're you make choices today over your health, you, you, the, the stock of health that, that's going to be affected is, is tomorrow's or next year's or 20 years from now health. Anyway, so um, they, they look at the trade-off. They add up all the time you spend across these four different possibilities. Uh, you could work. You could play. That TZ is the play. Remember, Z was that pl- you know, home good. Uh, you can spend time investing in your your health outcomes, visiting the doctor, running uh, a lap, biking, whatever. Uh, and and of course, you know, if you're somebody like me, your play largely consists of activities that that are at least supposed to improve your health. Sometimes I, I injure myself while I'm out there biking or, or whatever I'm doing. But but the goal is, I mean, for a lot of us, there's a lot of pleasure in and the the investments that we do into our health and and playing. And that you know. The model is a simplification, and it misses stuff like that. Uh, here, you either do one or the other, not not both, at the same time. And then finally, there's time spent sick, and presumably you can't enjoy anything if you're losing hours of a day to sickness. So that that's the way this model is structured. Now, I, you know, I'm going to just wave my hands at it. I don't I don't need to beat it to death, and I'm at coming up on nine minutes. So. Uh, here here I've I in the screencast you could pause it if you want to, but I just. Um, they, they had a table that illustrated the what work means. Um, they are working at a power plant. In the in those chapters, they have um, Homer Simpson uh, just do this guy making all these bad choices. And um, uh, they, anyway, they run through the analogy with with the Simpsons. It's pretty sort actually sort of funny. Well, very well written textbook in my opinion. A- a- anyway, whatever whatever you do for work, um, and then uh, playing. You know, again, it's it's all sorts of possibilities. And um, improving health, and uh, and then sleep, I guess, counts as 
an activity you'd, you'd undertake to increase your chance of being healthy, and then sick days are just waste. You're not faking it, you're sick. And then finally, uh, three, three roles of health. Health is this really complex good because it's, it's a long life good. It has, we, we actually study it by thinking about it as a capital asset, that it's a capital asset is an asset that you build up in one period, but that asset returns benefits later periods. So, um, but on the, by the same token, health is something that is really nice to have. And, and you know, when you go out and hike and you know, uh, do all that, you're, uh, maybe you're exhausting yourself, maybe you're risking injury, you're, you're consuming, um, consuming health, you're enjoying good health. Um, but but the, this, the, the important thing is the healthier you are, the more the productive time, that is time that's not spent being sick. Uh, and uh, I guess they, they don't include work time as productive time, which is, you know, in, in work in this model, you, you work to get income so you can play and invest in your health. Um, and, then, and then finally, uh, it, it's a form of capital. So it's, it's this really fascinating good to study. And, and again, just to beat a dead horse, debtor still the the, um, the 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 key inputs into your health are not healthcare. It's it's exercise, diet, etc. So no, it's, a, it's a really important model. Of course, the healthcare is that residual there there if you you underinvest in health. And then from there, uh, this text goes on and studies the connection between socioeconomic status and health. And notice that. Sometimes socioeconomic status feeds into your health. If you have a, a low socioeconomic status, chances are you had a bad ed- education. It's the way we fund education in most states is um, you know, local schools, public schools are closely, their quality is uh, better with, if it's a richer area, worse if it's a poor area. And then if you have a poor education, um, you, you can't necessarily make good decisions about health and, and, and a lot of things, and, and that, that status feeds into health. Um, but, uh, and, and there's all sorts of these, these in chapter four, they go through each of these hypotheses and they're, they're all, um, documenting how low socioeconomic status can lead to bad health. And in the research, in the empirical literature, we find that to be very, very true. If you're born a poor, uh, African-American person, your chances of living a long, healthy life are just, you know, tragically lower than, than if you're born, um, you know, a Caucasian um, female. We, we see uh, African American males are, are particularly at risk of um, very, very um, sad outcomes. Um, and and it, in many cases, it's it's their zip code where they were born that that re- determines that. Any, anyway, there, that's a real interesting uh, set of um, models, and and the, they all are subsets. They all can be expressed in this Grossman model that that. They lay out in, in chapter um, in chapter three. It's really a brilliant pair of chapters. A little bit technical, but and then finally, um, your health can lead to higher socioeconomic status, right? If you're healthy and you can work and um, that and get a lot of money, then you have high socioeconomic status. So it can go either way, causally. And then finally, there's stuff that both determines socioeconomic status and health. And as the um, father of an ADHD child. Um, it, it's really a sight to behold that this this child is um, just has what we call a, a very high discount rate. That means the the present is just so much more interesting than the future, and and he's constantly making decisions that that maximize his pleasure in the moment, and and really at the cost of long term well being. And and long term might be two minutes away from now. It's really uh, an interesting um, disorder, and. Um, but but a lot of Americans uh, seem to act in a way that that is not rational in the sense that we have a a very very high discount rate relative to people that have grown up in other nations, and uh, we see that in the low savings rate and all all sorts of other behaviors. So I'll leave it at that. Uh, there's a real interesting couple of chapters we're not looking at. If you're if you have time on your hands, they, they'd be sort of interesting to check out. Leave. Thanks for listening. If you've gone this far. <laughs>